Hello everyone, this is not my normal video, but per request from a large YouTube channel, I believe it's called My Old Car, wanted me to share this information with them, and so I am sharing it with them. They want to do a video on the EB1, and I happen to own a, like a press release book, media information from a former GM employee. I paid $35 for this at auction with $15 in shipping. Um... Oh, one thing that was inside this book was this newspaper article. Now, this is going to be a thing where if you want to read something in detail, I think you should pause it and read it. Um, I don't know what this is from. Oh, Auto Week 1997, apparently. So hopefully you guys can pause that and read that if you want to read it. Um, I'm going to try and move fast. Uh, June 19... 96. There's a little um, ink bleed on this separation sheet there. Um, you know, I took a big interest in the GM EB1 when I was a teenager, and that's why I acquired this book. I used to sell used cars for many years, and um, electric cars were very fascinating to me. I wanted to absorb as much information about them as I could. Um, I think modern electric cars are an assault on the senses. I am not for them. <laughs> uh, I think that it's not as much of a car as I want it to be. I don't like... Oh, this is this is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> Look at the, the dates. Yeah, so I haven't looked at this in years. It is one of my prized possessions. But, um, yeah, so January 4th and 5th. The EV1 was announced. 1996. The S-Series electric pickup truck production was also announced. See, I don't know if they even did that. Oh, look, at they spelled preview with the EV capitalized. <laughs> yeah, so the GM EV1 is still quite fascinating to me. Um, the early electric cars are fascinating to me. Modern electric cars... They could stay away from me. Um, I prefer to burn even more gasoline. I have um, an eight-cylinder vehicle. I like the smell of gasoline. I like using gasoline. <laughs> I like that my car feels like a car. I don't know if some of you guys would agree with me, but you know, I was talking to my plastic surgeon, and he said, you know, absolute depression would be if somebody told me I had to drive an electric car. He goes, I... I don't think I'd be able to live like that. You know, he has a um, 65 Shelby and he was showing me pictures of it. I said, oh, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. He's like, I'm happy that it gets four, four miles to the gallon or whatever it is. He goes, I love riding around in that thing. And I said, I don't blame you. That's a wonderful car. And it's certainly a privilege to be able to own and drive one. And, uh, you know, he earned it. He's done a lot of good work for his life and he... Certainly earned it. Uh, it is. It would be my absolute dream, though, to see one of these in person. I know that there's some in automotive museums, and I think there's only one that still can drive. And I think that's at like the Smithsonian Museum or something. I'm I'm not quite sure. I look forward to seeing this YouTuber's video on the EV1. So that's why I wanted to. Uh, Go ahead and film all of this for them. See, this is great. It goes into the details of all this. Interesting. And, they, and it seems like they try to dumb some of it down in a way. Motors rotor is about the size of a one-pound coffee can. Quiet. Highly efficient. <laughs> Think of a 50,000-watt AM radio super station. Forget vacuum pumps, electrically ap applied brakes. It energizes every time the brake pedal is depressed. Yeah, to me, the fact that they took the GM EV1 back from the people who leased it to crush them is just devastating. I mean, to me, like being able to take somebody's, I know they only lease them, but to take somebody's car when they would 
want to keep it. That's that's devastating. People tend to get very attached to their cars, which is why I like to watch a lot of older car videos. I mean, I sold a lot of 90s cars. 137 horsepower. Induction motor. That's very low horsepower considering what the electric cars of today can produce. You know, the Lucid, I think it's a thousand or more horsepower, 1100 maybe. Uh, just an insane amount of horsepower. <laughs> um, the thing I, I, oh, let me, uh, let me turn this for better viewing. Yeah, one thing I, I don't like about the electric cars is that that whole thing is pure computer. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I guess we're not turning it. <laughs> uh, just for that one page there. Um, now here it is discussing the electrical system. I don't know how much of this was really made public. This could be a lot of um, nonsense information. Um, maybe maybe it's not for public release, but uh, like I said, I, I had messaged the person I bought it from on eBay. And again, pause this if you want to read this all. Um, and they said, you know, they worked for GM. And that's why they have this. And they were selling a bunch of things like this on eBay. Magna Charge. Yeah, I remember just being a teenager and sitting there and just reading this book and just finding it to be the most fascinating thing. You know, I think Toyota really did a good job with the Prius, though. I will compliment the Prius as being for what it is, a great car. I think that people should have the choice if they want electric cars or not. It should be everybody's choice. It should not be forced, certainly at this point. In my area in particular, we just don't have ideal infrastructure to have an EV, honestly, unless you're exclusively charging at your house, which means you do not make long trips. Um, so... If I were to take a long trip like I normally do, I would have to try and plan it around the charging stations. And you gotta figure, I live in New England, like not in the most rural area, but still it's, I see electric Porsches charging at the Walmart. <laughs> and I'm like, those cars don't wanna be there. <laughs> the Auburn Mall is a charging station. Well, not many people with $100,000 cars wanna sit there at the Auburn Mall. Yeah, and just for me, somebody who lived, eat, and breathed these 90s gasoline cars, even 80s cars, you know, just a different machine. Aluminum space frame. Very interesting. Uh, but hopefully my ignorance on the EV topic does not offend any of you. Like I said, I respect the free market and I want people to choose what they want. I hope that was enough time to read that. I want people to choose what they want. Well, at least pause it and read it. <laughs> um, you know, Saturn. Saturn was a very unique uh, car company where it had a lot of the plastic frames, which is nice. In New England, you don't see the rust. However, sometimes you would see one, you know, on the side of the road because part of the underneath had fallen out and had rusted um completely out so you didn't know the vehicle's rusty unless you looked underneath <laughs> um you know the salt on our roads will just destroy vehicles just destroy them you know i've i had a car i had a sob i i collected and sold a lot of sobs and i had one where i bought it at the auction I left the auction and I filled the gas tank because to me it's like, why wouldn't you just fill a gas tank? It's not that crazy. Who wants to drive around constantly wanting to put $10 in, $10 in, right? So I filled the gas tank and filling the gas tank, the weight of that, because it was rusty, it caused it to fall down on the highway. And I'm leaking gasoline. Somebody beeps at me and goes, your gas tank is falling out. It's hanging. You're going you're gonna to cause a fire. So I pull over and I say, no way. <laughs> oh. Cars with advanced composite construction than any other maker in the world. Corvettes, Fieros, Saturns, Camaros, Firebirds, minivans. Bob 
supply repairs are very straightforward. Yeah, the, the weight with the EV is very interesting how they made it pretty lightweight. There's the exterior body panels. Not sure what that means in particular, but maybe there's some coating here that explains it. The interior. Now, I'm sure the interior was not wasting electricity. One luxury the EV one can't afford. Heat pump. <laughs> huh. Yeah, from from what I heard, the the range was not great because the batteries were just so archaic and then it varied greatly based on external temperature, hills, all that stuff. So there's the features. Very uh, detailed there. Yeah, power windows and door locks, which I'm actually a little surprised about. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but scotch guard seats. Put some Michelin tires on it. Yeah, there's some detail about the wattage and the volts. Piece of hair there. <laughs> Probably not mine. This thing has not been opened very much. Oh, so there's some more definitions there. Yeah, I wonder how much of this is public information. Because, you know, I tried to look this up and I couldn't find it. And for the sake of historical preservation, it only makes sense for me to share it with the world on YouTube here. Um, hopefully you guys can pause that there. But yeah, this is not my attempt to read it all. Oh, so they didn't even know at the time that this was released. So to be determined. So it's like the people that leased it were the test subjects, I guess. Or they didn't finish the testing at the time of this publication. And, you know, one thing that's a little iffy about sharing this is the people's contact information, but this is almost 30 years old at this point, so. These advanced vehicles will be available through approximately 25 Saturn retail facilities, Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, and Tucson, and I know that that is how they executed it before terminating the program. Uh, they only put it out in those areas. I don't know if that was the exact course of execution, execution, but it was that general region that uh, received the vehicles for lease. And I do know that one thing, you had to have a gasoline car in addition to this. Um, that was a requirement to lease it. The mid-30K lease pricey, I wish I knew what that was compared to, you know, current money with inflation there. Ozone friendly refrigerator. <laughs> I 10% federal tax credit. See, I didn't even know they had those tax credit incentives back then. Yeah, me personally, if I did get an electric vehicle, I would have to have one of my favorite 90s cars, like a Saab on the side, just to just experience that. To go on long trips with it. Not saying that it's reliable, but God, you gotta live a little. Oh, you can call that number and get a brochure. See, it's funny. I went to one of the websites that was listed on here, you know, 10 years ago or so. And I think it brought me to Chevy's Vault. Maybe. I can't quite remember what it was called. But it had a very bizarre interior that was striking to me. It was like... Look like recycled plastic of various colors or something that was pictured on the website. I thought that was so odd. If somebody knows what that is, let me know. And here we have more phone numbers. Such. There's a list of Saturn dealerships, though. I like to see that. <laughs> so I wonder if these are all the dealerships that actually got the EV1.
That is a great historical record if it is. Like, that's really nice. As of June 17th, 1996. I wonder if that is a full list of the retailers that was selling them. That's really cool. Manufacturing. Oh, I was going to say, is there no pages? <laughs> that would have been bad. <laughs> Um, there's no more assembly line. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just going to have to sit down and read it. Maybe using my own video. Should go without saying, if you don't want my dialogue, just mute me. <laughs> if you're just here for that. Um, then we're going to get to a pretty interesting part of this video where there's photo slides. Wow, these pages are sticky. Training the hourly personnel. Sticky, sticky pages. Building low volume products of many other kinds in years to come. Yeah, so unfortunately I can't log into that eBay account or even that email Oh, wow, there's some, some ink transfer there for sure. Um, because, you know, I was a teenager at the time. Hopefully this is still legible. Despite that ink transfer, I can see it okay. Oh, yeah, they did not let that ink dry. I'm going to change the angle a little bit. Hopefully that helps. Wow, this really... They really rushed that one, huh? Yeah, wow. Hopefully you guys can see that well. If anybody needs clarification, please let me know down in the comments. Um, okay, so we have quite a bit of interesting things to go through. So now that we're out of the script, so these are some slides here. Some pictures. Actually, they're like they're really stuck in there. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Yeah, but I just feel good about recording this for preservation's sake because what if, you know, God forbid, like, this, I lose this in a fire and I had the only copy in existence. Like, I would feel terrible that for automotive history, this is not recorded. Just look at that, that body styling, man. Yeah, so these are printed on, like, photo paper. They're glossy. They feel like when you go to, like, Walgreens or CVS and you get some pictures printed out, that's what they feel like. Is there two there? Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. This says 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. There's the cutaway. I think these were pictures that were kind of like sent to like newspapers and magazines, stuff like this. They were able to obtain these because I have seen these pictures like online. Um, EV under hood. Very interesting. Yeah, they were not um, shying away from sharing a lot of the inner workings, which I think is great. Again, it's still, like, a dream of mine to see one of these in person. <laughs> oh, a convenience charger. Look at that. <laughs> I think it's just how they... I don't know what that is. I think that's so you can plug it in and trickle charge. That's the regular home chargers. Yeah, look at that. This just looks so archaic. <laughs> compared to modern cars, but I do rather actually like the design. Why do they have a a child with an umbrella playing with the cord? That is a very odd picture. That's not odd. That's odd. That's a little kid holding the cord with an umbrella. That's weird. <laughs> is it a child? Like, I, I don't even know. Like, there's nothing weird about these other people. And that one's like, what? what is, why is a child charging a car? Charge port and paddle. Very interesting charging mechanism. 
Now, I believe they, the reason they recalled and crushed the EV1s is because they couldn't maintain parts and safety for the required duration of the car's life. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I know that there was also possibly a couple fires involved. Um, yeah, if anybody knows exactly why they they terminated everybody's leases and recalled them, let me know. But yeah, I know people were very fond of their EVs. And I'm sure a lot of those people wound up getting Teslas and other electric cars as time went on. I'm sure they got the Prius when they first came out. That's, I should probably zoom in on this one because there's a lot of detail there. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do a good job with this. <laughs> there it is on the go. Yeah, why don't I, why don't I do a good job with the detail? <laughs> I have one job. One job. <laughs> the interior. Now take a look at that interior. I even think the details in the seats look pretty nice. Um... The car is very Saturn, but also futuristic in a way. I love that. You know, I'm somebody who had a Buick Riata. Um, and I loved that very vintage digital dash. Yeah, but for me, putting all the... Oh, the, here's color slides. Me putting, like, to me, putting all these giant tablets in cars, I'm not here for it. Like, everything is so electronically dependent in modern cars, even if it's a more basic car. I like, um, I like a good old-fashioned car. So I'm going to put these, ba oh, I should put them in the right order, so I'll do that afterwards. So I'm just going to set them down somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I want, to, I want to put them back proper, so we'll do that after. Now, this is not... Huh, let's take a look at this. Try to be careful with that. Oh, I forgot to check the back of those, now that I mention it. But it looked like they were all just saying it was, uh, this paper is manufactured by Kodak. So it's Kodak photo paper. So let's see if there's anything different in here. Looks like probably just some bigger slides. Oh, there's a nice bigger slide of that. I'm sorry about showing the other ones if this is all the same, but bigger. But uh, we'll show them real quick anyways. I hope it's got a close-up of that girl with the umbrella. <laughs> it doesn't. It's just some of those bigger. Okay. And the EV1 interior. All right, so that wasn't a lot. So I will put those back. And yeah, those have held up very well. Ugh. All right, so this is the tough part. I'm not sure how to show these, but I feel like these are pretty important. So I have a light here. Let's let's do a little test. Let's do a test. Oh, I wish I had some way to show these off better. I don't think that uh, the light is helping. No, it's not helping. Okay, so we're going to do it without the light. And if we put it over a white background, you can see it rather well. Like if I move it to the side. Um, so I don't know if any of these are going to be particularly interesting, but let's show them off anyways, like I said, for historical preservation purposes. So I'm not sure what you use to, um, <laughs> showcase these properly. <laughs> Is it like a projector type of system? Oh, oh, that was stuck in there pretty good. Let's see. It's a nice color slide there. If it says anything more. Towards screen. Plast amount made in USA. So that's what they say on the back. And they are numbered. Like somebody numbered these. This is five. Yeah, 
stuck in there. It's probably good to t take him out and let him breathe a little. Six. It's a good angle there. And please, if you do need to see more of this, any more detail on anything, have any questions, do not be afraid to comment. Um, please reach out to me with my normal um, links. I've been meaning to make just a direct email. Um, the email I've been responding to most people is my New England car dealers email just because it's more of a business email and I will see most things coming in there. Hopefully that looks good. That would definitely look better blown up. Um, oh, that went sideways for some reason. Uh, that's that slide, that picture that we saw with all the detail button color. Um, there's under the hood. EV1 Power Electronics Bay Module. And we did see a lot of pictures showing this stuff off. Uh, drive Unit Assembly. I'm going to put that in proper now. There we go. 13 is where it should be. Uh, 14. We got a battery. I actually saw... So this battery has a bunch of smaller batteries in it. And I saw somebody dismantling it and selling it on eBay recently and they were charging $50 a cell and that is not something I would want to own <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> like I'm terrified of my 90s laptops that I use for gaming just the batteries that they have in there like just having them in my house scares me a little bit um there is a good picture of the convenience charger Number 17 is the 120 and 220 volt chargers. Is that sideways? I don't even, I don't even know what's happening. It looks like it's sideways. <laughs> A close-up of the convenience charger being used in that picture that we saw. We got another sideways one. Number 19 is actually sideways. Maybe that's why they were sideways. <laughs> Uh, I gotta put it back in that way though. Uh, EV1 charging. There it has the charger being placed in it. Okay. Oh, these are in there loose. I'm not sure why these are loose. I, and it is in the condition that it was sent to me. There we have one, two, three, four. Looks like the ones we just saw. It looks like duplicates. So it looks like one, two, three, four, and five. Let me turn these around. I have no idea why these are in there again, and they're not in their proper place. Eight is missing from that. This is, oh, Saturn. Okay, let's take a look at Saturn while we're here. The Saturn SC1, very nice vehicle. I'm sorry, it would look better against the white background. Uh, Let's see. We'll do this for now. Saturn SC1. Yeah, this is fun. Seeing these ones. I didn't realize that the Saturn ones were in there. There is an SC2. Beautiful car. Actually, let me put it back where they belong. I don't want to get them mixed up here. Try to be careful not to touch the sensitive part. There is the SL. Oh, I wish there was a better way to display these. The SL1. SL2. Slide number five. Oh, the station wagon. Beautiful car. Beautiful, beautiful car. I love those. I had one of those once. Uh, Station Wagon 2. So this looks like a lineup. SL1, SC2, SW2. That looks great. That's a great slide. Oh, 
here is, so this is going to be the last page, so we might as well go ahead and do this. This is going to be a little tough, though. Oh, yeah, that's not coming out. <laughs> I was going to say, let me pull the page out, but that's okay. We will, uh, we will do this for each one. It's fine. If you're still watching, you're really interested. There we Okay, so we have that strange girl with the umbrella. Try to get to focus a little better. That is a really weird picture. <laughs> um, yeah, so this might just all be pictures that we've already seen, but I'm not going to take the chance. Woman charging the EV one. Uh, public charging very 90s picture that's a sideways one so that's probably why it was in there sideways i just remember taking these and holding them up to the light i'm like i wish i could see these better port and paddle my finger there I'm being a kid just spending hours looking at this and I'm just like, whoa, what, what? <laughs> Convenience charger. Home charger. Let's take a look at the, the home charger. I think that looks pretty good. Front disc brakes. Let's take a look at this. Detail of the brakes. They don't look too different to me, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Rear drum brakes. Galileo brake system. I think we saw a picture of this inside the handbook. I don't think that's going to be very detailed. I'm trying to look at it that way. We have front suspension, slide number 30. Rear suspension, 31. Rolling chassis, 32. Yeah, so I feel like the people giving the presentations, they must have um, needed two people. I feel like to, to do the slides and have somebody walking around talking and pointing at stuff, but maybe not. Maybe one person could have done this. Swapped out the slides, but for like speed, I don't know if they would have done it like that. Um, so here's 34, the EV one. See, and I'm glad this isn't like a VHS tape or anything, because could you imagine trying to <laughs> watch that these days? And I got nothing against VHSs. In fact, I own some, but... And I own an old TV because I like to play retro games, but I don't think I'd want to be uh, trying to record for you guys a VHS tape right now with this. And not to mention the the lack of longevity, like having this in print, you know, 10 years from now, I'm going to pick this up and this is hopefully going to be still completely intact. EV1 exterior, I mean interior on slide 38. We got the console. This should be a fun one. Oh, let me not do that. <laughs> 
That's what I was worried about doing. As long as I don't damage the picture, we're good. Yeah, I like that a lot. The console is delightfully designed, very Saturn. And then we have the trunk with the convenience charger put right there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, please do not be afraid to reach out if you have any questions about anything you saw today. I'm a little sad that one of the slides is missing, but I don't think I did that. I think I obtained it like that. And that is literally the end of the book here. I'm going to put those pictures back in after, but uh, this is a very interesting piece of automotive history. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I would say subscribe, but I'm probably never going to do much automotive content. But uh, I appreciate the support can leave a thumbs up and a comment. Bye for now, everyone, and take care, and hopefully I'll see y'all soon.